Hi and welcome back to my channel. So if you follow this channel then you will know that I personally love eToro. I think it's a great entry point for many people into the stock market due to the ease of use and copy trading functionality. eToro was my very first broker and this is why I talk about it a lot on this channel. And I even have a whole playlist educating people about eToro. So for those of you who haven't seen it, I'll put a link to it up here and in the description below. But just like all brokers, none of them are perfect. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk about certain things I would personally improve with eToro. And then I will finish up with a few additional points that other people have raised that they would like to see improving on eToro also. Now, before anyone complains that this video is negative, I'd rather see it as constructive criticism. So for each point I specify, I'll give a reason as to how they could improve this. So if anyone from eToro is watching, then please take note and or feel free to pop me a check in the post. Nah, I'm only joking. So if you're new here, then my name's Ollie, and on this channel, we talk about all things related to personal finance and investing. So if you enjoy this video, then I'd really appreciate an early thumbs up as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm so that my content can reach more people. Also, please subscribe and press the bell icon to be notified of the latest videos as I upload new content every week. Please note the information in this video is not intended to be financial advice. And if you want financial advice, you should seek a licensed professional. Because at the end of the day, I am just a guy on YouTube, so please do your own research also. If you're not already signed up to eToro and decide to sign up while watching this video, then I have an affiliate link down below this video, which if you sign up using it, then I will get a kickback and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really helps support this channel. So my number one area I would improve about eToro is the customer service. Now, my account manager is actually really helpful, but anything out of his realm is often not that great. It often takes weeks to get a reply or get to the bottom of an issue. And in the past, I've sometimes been sent generic copy and paste answers without the customer support even reading my question properly. They do normally get things resolved in the end, but don't expect an answer straight away. I appreciate as a platform grows, they will experience growing pains and with over 20 million users, it's understandable that they must get a lot of queries. So a suggestion to fix this going forward would potentially be to hire additional support staff. So my second area I would improve about eToro is to list more stocks and ETFs. Now, don't get me wrong, this has definitely improved over time and for 99% of people, this won't ever be a problem because all your major companies are listed on eToro. But if you want something a bit more obscure, niche or perhaps a penny stock, you may not find it. This is also why I use Interactive Brokers, which basically has access to most stock exchanges around the world. And I have always been able to find a stock that I wanted on there, but that also comes at a cost. It appears eToro is continually improving this over time and it seems they are on the ball with this and they even have an asset suggestion form. So if there is something they are missing, you can actually request it. I'll put the link to this form in the description below. The form says there are many considerations when listing assets on the eToro platform, including but not limited to liquidity and market cap, as well as security, business and risk considerations. I presume due to their copy trading functionality, they need stocks with a lot of liquidity. Say for example, you have one of the larger popular investors on the platform, such as J Nemesis with nearly 24,000 followers. If he places a trade in a stock, then every single one of his followers will also make that trade simultaneously. So for all of them to get in at the same price, they need stocks with high liquidity. And this, this also brings me along nicely to my third suggestion, and that would be for eToro to offer options trading. While I don't personally trade options yet, it is something I would like to dabble with later this year. Probably unsuccessfully, so definitely gonna be on the paper trading first. Now, as a software developer, I understand this isn't as easy as flicking a switch, as I have actually developed basic options tracking software in the past. So eToro would need a lot of development before they can offer this, but hopefully one day in the future they can. So my fourth suggestion for improvement would be the ability to allow pre-market or after hours trading. Other brokers offer this, but at a cost. So I think it would be fair and understandable for eToro to offer this at a charge also. This was really highlighted in the past week where Meta moved 22% in after hours trading due to their poor earnings call. 
So at least if you held the stocks with other brokers and you had wanted to close out a position, then you would have been able to. Currently with eToro, if you see it moving pre-market, you can set it to close, but it will only do this once the market opens, which in the case of Facebook could have been a lot further away than where you would originally anticipate it. In lack of this, it would be nice to offer up the prices from extended trading on each of the asset pages and also on the watch list page, as I currently have to track this off of eToro. So it would be great if they could include this at some point. So my fifth suggestion for improvement would be reducing the minimum trade sizes on some assets. Stocks, ETFs and cryptos have a minimum trade size of $10, which is low. But at the time of recording, for indices, the minimum trade amount is $200. And for commodities and effects, it's $1,000, which is a lot of money for a single trade. I can't really understand why they have imposed this high minimum amount on these assets because you can still get access to these assets through copy positions without spending the 200 or $1,000. For example, if you look at this copy position with Liam Davies, I have a Euro Swiss franc trade open for $27.41, which has circumvented the $1,000. If anyone knows the reason for such a high minimum trade fee on these assets, then please let us know in the comments below. So a quick money saving tip, if you want to get around the minimum trade size on indices, then instead of investing directly in the index, such as the SPX 500 or the NASDAQ 100, you can alternatively just invest in an ETF of the index. So for the S&P 500, you would invest in VU or SPY, and for the NASDAQ, you could invest in QQQ. In addition to this reducing the minimum trade size, it will also not charge you an overnight or weekend fee. That would be charged if you opened a trade on the index directly. So my sixth suggestion for an improvement to eToro is to potentially allow cash balances in other currencies as the available balance is based in US dollars. So unless you have a US dollar bank account that you fund eToro with, then you will have to pay conversion fees to get your money into US dollars. This conversion fee also applies when you're withdrawing your money. Now, this is also why I tend to not keep a balance of cash on my eToro account, because I'll always be exposed to the movement of the GBP to US dollar effects rate. And originally I was suggested by an old eToro account manager that I should open a hedging position of GBP USD, but I don't follow the effects market well enough to know whether it's going to go up or down. Plus that would come at a minimum of $1,000 and would also come with an overnight fee. So this is why I'd just rather keep my money in my bank account until it's required on eToro. eToro does offer interest on cash balances after reaching a certain level on the eToro club, which at the time of recording on the 6th of February 2022 is 0.35%. But the Bank of England base rate just went up to 0.5% in the past week. So I'm currently better off keeping this in my own savings. But who knows, considering this only changed in just the past week and eToro was previously beating the UK base rate, then perhaps they will adjust this in time. Now, I also want to touch on a few other areas that I've seen other people mention online in the past, but they aren't my own personal suggestions. One of these is that people do not like the high spread fees on cryptos. Now, there is technically no such thing as fee-free trading. If it appears to be free, then you are getting charged somewhere else. eToro has to make money one way or another, otherwise they wouldn't be in business. It's also quite hard to find a direct comparison on fees between brokers due to the different ways these are charged. So while one broker may charge less on spreads, they may charge more on transaction fees or in another area. Obviously, if you are a trader and actively trading on eToro, then these may accumulate over time. But as an investor, it's not as bad. But if you look here, you can see it varies massively depending on what crypto you're buying, ranging from a low of 0.75% for Bitcoin up to 5% on some altcoins. While they make it very easy to purchase cryptos, convenience may sometimes come at a cost. Also, it's worth noting that when you buy crypto on the eToro trading platform, you do not have a specific wallet address, but instead just have a holding. If you want to have your crypto in a wallet with eToro, then you have to then move it to the eToro Money app, which is a mobile app, and you will also be charged to move it from the eToro trading platform to the eToro Money app. So one other area other people have raised concerns with is that when you withdraw cash, you have to send it back to the account it came from. Now, I can totally understand why eToro did this, 
as it's for security reasons, which for the majority of people is a great feature. So say someone hacked your account, then they wouldn't be able to cash it out and send all of your money to their bank account. But someone raised a point in my comments recently that there are times when this may not be the best thing to do. For example, if you're moving country or moving bank, then you may have to close your positions and then send the money back to your funding account, then move it to your new bank, then redeposit it, and then reopen positions, which would all come at a cost and also be a massive pain in the Now, please note, I've not tried this, so there may be ways around this. And after looking on their site, I presume there may be, as it states, please note you will be asked to provide an alternative payment method if we are unable to return your funds via your original deposit method. But this still sounds like they're going to attempt to return it via your original funding method first, then they will ask you for an alternative when that one fails, which may not be ideal if say you funded it from a joint account with your ex-partner and you've since had a divorce, then you may really not want that money to go back there. So I'd love to know if anyone wasn't able to return their funds to their original account and what happened and how eToro handled it. So if it's happened to you, then please let us know about it in the comments below. So that's it for this video. If you got any value from it, then please smash the like button as it really helps support the channel. If you have any suggestions for eToro, then please let us know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you're thinking and I read all your comments. Also, if you want to learn more about personal finance or investing, I recommend you subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss out on any future updates as I upload new content every week. It's been Ollie from Get Geek Finance. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.